Hi, everyone. Uh, Wi-Fi details, you have one second. OK, bye. Right, what is WordPress CLI? Well, it's pretty much what it says. It's a command line interface for you to uh, manipulate WordPress so you don't have to play with the web UI. Uh, it was originally coded by Christy Berker and Andreas Creighton, and uh, Daniel Bukhala is uh, mostly the main dude that looks after it, but if you've looked at their GitHub, the activity stream is pretty intense. I've not seen a Git um, that active for a while. Um, what can you do? You can install and update WordPress themes, plugins, you can manage your content, manipulate your users, and a whole bunch more. It works on single and multi-site installs. So why the command line? Why not would be my question. Uh, not having to use a mouse is very handy and very fast. So makes it very, very quick and easy for you to do all kinds of different things. If you can type it, you can script it, and if you can script it, it can be repeated, um, which makes uh, your automation happen. The interface doesn't change, it's all text. Uh, and if you seem to be on a terrible connection, which can happen, as per Jeff yesterday mentioning, or was it with Jeff, mentioning how he was using Shell on his phone to fix a client site? Um, I've had to do the same thing, and WPCLI has saved my bacon. Uh, Errors are easy to detect because you'll get a response very quickly that something isn't working. And if the command is documented correctly, you get help built in. So you can type out the commands as you go, and it'll tell you what you've missed, or just tell you you've typed something completely incorrectly. So uh, the WPCLI website tells you how to install it. I'm not going to go through that. but. Once you've installed and followed their instructions, you should get something like this at your, uh, at your prompt. As you can see, I'm running this on MAMP. Uh, it doesn't work on Windows very well. Uh, I haven't even tried, to be honest. But it should work on any flavor of uh, Linux and, and Mac. Uh, basic commands would be more the setup side of things. So I'm going to cover two kind of streams, basic commands and uh, what I would call advanced commands, which is more manipulation of your, your environment when you've got it set up and running. Um, I have notes to slow down, otherwise I'll talk too fast. Right, um, first thing you'd want to do is look at some of the common commands. WP core, kind of makes sense what you do with that one. Uh, WP plugin, same there. WP theme, and WP user. So the first one is WP Core, and that allows you to install and configure your base WordPress install, whether that's a single site or multi-site. First, you have to download uh, the core, whether that comes from cache or fresh. It depends on whether um, you've run the command recently. Then you need to configure it, which is WP Config or Core Config, which will create the WP-Config file for you, which is very handy if you need to spin up client sites. Um, and then core install, which pretty much skips the installer screen you get when you first install WordPress. Um, I've just given you a, a quick little thing there, which shows you what would run. I didn't do the output because I'll actually do a demo a bit later. You can install and activate plugins. Um, you can chain the plugins too. So if you have a whole list of plugins you like to install, you can have them all on one line. Um, and then you can activate them as you want. You can search for plugins. Uh, the plugin you need to, when you name the plugin you want to install, it's the slug for your plugin. So you can see that here. That's what you want to use. Unless you've got a very unique plugin, you can do the in quotations. Uh, and you can chain them and activate all at the same time. So install WooCommerce and WC vendors and activate them. Um, Themes are pretty straightforward. A lot of the common commands are the same across most of the install stuff. So you get uh, download, install, activate, search. And these search the um, WordPress org. So you can install themes, activate, 
search for themes, do all that kind of themey stuff. Users come in handy. If uh, someone's forgotten their password, it's a good way to not have to touch the database um, or purge a user. You can just reset their password on the command line, which is pretty handy. One that's pretty good for people who haven't used WPC Alive very often um, is the dash prompt, and it'll just go through and prompt you for each of the um, user fields as you require, or you can just chain a nice big one like that. Uh, and then you can add roles and do all of the stuff you would usually do on the back end, but all without having to touch the back end. Here's where the stuff gets fun and interesting and where you'd probably spend most of your time um, once you've got things set up and configured because it'll allow you to um, do a whole bunch of different stuff. One that I thought that, that I use quite regularly is being able to manipulate posts on the command line. So being able to create a post on the command line, I actually have, I don't know if you guys know what Nargios is, but it's a server monitoring system. And I have an internal status blog for all my servers that will post um, relevant information to uh, a status blog so everyone on the network for the company I work for knows what's going on and I do that all on the command line. Um, if you want to post regular um, scheduled posts and things like that where you're getting the data externally, another good way to do it is with uh, this. Updating your site options and other cool utilities. One of my favorite is search and replace. Um, so when you migrate a site from your local development environment to uh, a staging or production environment, search and replace will actually go through and find every single ver uh, instance of that string and replace it with your, your domain. So, oh, yeah. Does it cover the arrays as well? Serialized arrays? It does. It does. And another good one, if you change your thumbnail sizes, regenerate your media. And that's a big one for people who have huge subsets of media. Um, do it all on the command line and don't have to worry about the, is it working um, on the, the little loady bit there, uh, <laughs> which often happens. Importing and exporting data. I forgot to put the export command, but it's pretty much the same thing, but export. Uh, this, is, this one here will actually import the dummy data for WooCommerce. It takes forever um, because it's actually pulling down all the media off the web. Um, which reminds me, uh, doo, doo, doo. where am I? You will not be any. I'll just kick that off because it'll take a while. Uh, and that'll allow you to import your data and do a whole bunch of useful things. Um, export's another good one for part of your uh, migration from local dev through to staging and um, production as well. So you export from one, import to the other, search and replace, and then you could go. Right. Demo time. I'll type really slowly because I've spoken quickly. I've already run um, one ready to go here. This is my script, which is available on my GitHub if you want to use it. Oh no! Oh, I know why. I'm running the script twice. I broke it! And that one's going to break in a second too. Rightio. What we'll do is we'll just All right, when you're inside, you have to be um, in a WordPress install. You can pass a path to your um, WP command. It's easy to just do it within the install when you're doing interactive, so. I'll search the database and tell me what current plugins are installed. So it gives you an idea of what's been installed. 
Mm. Has anyone got a theme they like to use? Wow. Which one? Wow. How do you spell that? There you go. So then you could. Let's see how slow the network is. Do it. Um, get that, and now it's installed. So. We've got Quark and Storefront and a few others. Here we've got, as I told you, 31 or 78. Still going. Um, I'll make that a little bit bigger, actually. Mega size. So what I'll actually do is I have got a script here, and I'll talk through my script. So what I've got here is uh, it's just a simple bash script. Um, I got a little bit fancy, so it checks to make sure WPCLI is installed. It'll automatically generate a database based on the name of the directory passed to the uh, script, and then it append, uh, appends the date on the end. Uh, then it'll create a user in your database, so in theory, um, it won't overwrite your database, but I did that already. Uh, then it'll go through and start creating a new site. Here's the standard stuff. Don't interrupt me, demo. I like to remove the sample, just cause. Config, then install. Got a whole bunch of base plugins which I've defined up here. So if you want to actually change what plugins are installed, you just change that line there and then that'll change that. Activate my base plugins, delete the hello plugin. I need to delete the sample page for my uh, WooCommerce demo, which is this guy here. What this does is it installs uh, the storefront WooCommerce theme, creates all the WooCommerce pages. Um, from there, it will uh, create your contact form, your contact page, populates the privacy policy in terms from some sample um, documents I found on the web, uh, and then it'll create your primary and secondary navigation, uh, populate the menu for you, and then it imports the demo content so you see what's going on. Then it'll rewrite your permalink structure for you, so WooCommerce requires that for their endpoints to work. And then it just outputs what, what it should look like. And it already, because I'm on OSX, this open site URL will actually open my browser, which it did. The question is not that one. This guy. Test door two, so if you go up here, go over to the script, see home, shop, about, terms and condition, privacy, policy, and contact. The system works. Uh, and yeah, it's actually inserted the short code uh, directly into the page from the script, because uh, when you install contact form seven, it creates a generic contact form. So I just grab that. Um, contact form ID direct um, out of the DB. So it allows you to do a whole bunch of nice demo stuff. All the content's been imported. And the terms and conditions actually pull in from a text file, which you can change if you need to. And this is all done automatically. Um, one thing I was trying to do was actually to reset the shop homepage, but there's a limitation in how WPCLI uh, manages its, uh, its pages. So when you ask for a page from the, from the database, it formats it in such a way that it's a bit of a pain to uh, extract the IDs correctly with bash, slash I couldn't be bothered. Uh, all that code is available up on here. So if you want to mess around, fork it, make it better, uh, you can. How many more minutes do I have? Ooh, 20. Yeah. Does anyone have anything specific within WPCLI they want me to demo? Or questions that I could mess around with at the same time? How is the um, theme, the list of themes, and the metadata for the um, plugins being stored? 
Uh, it, if, if it's local, everything... Okay, the question was, how is the theme metadata uh, stored? And if you're searching for a theme, it's actually searching the wordpress.org repository. And for anything that's on the installation, it's actually just querying the, the local installs database. So, um, let's go over here. So that there, this is all done. Uh, this, that's just querying what's the current installs. That's actually an array that lives in the, the DB, so it's just been formatted into a nice format for you. Um, it's, does anyone have a favorite plugin that I haven't installed? Oh, yeah. I, uh, we've just got a plugin for our work, and um, it takes over, so it's sort of like a drag and drop system because we've got content editors that obviously need that and have no idea about HTML and that. So when we put a, um, like a URL in the page, it base64 encodes it. So yep. would search and replace do that? Because I know it goes through the serialized arrays and uh, so that, but would it manage to be able to pick up something like that? I don't think so because the base64 encode. It'd be a good thing to suggest to WPCLI, and I'll have a look actually. Um, I'll write that down because I like um, contributing random things to it. So. Yeah, because that'd be pretty handy. That's one thing I forgot to mention is that you don't have to just um, install plugins or themes from the WordPress repo. You can give private URLs and local zip files as well. Um, so if you have uh, paid for plugins or anything like that. Uh, you can just link to an S3 link or an internal server or something you've got, or just package the zip file um, with your code that you zip up, uh, that you send up onto onto your server. And then, Let's see what other commands I can demo for you. Then, let's play with posts. So here's the. The built-in help, so if you like WP, it'll actually tell you all of the different available. Oh, this is my fun one. It's one of my favorite commands, actually. This allows you to generate skeleton code for custom post types, child themes, and taxonomies. So say you've got a, you want to make an events post type. Let's go the whole hog, shall we? And you always want to be translatable. And see what happens. Boom! Let's make that a little bit smaller. It's outputted all the code you need to create a custom post type. And it pre-fills in everything for you, does everything you need to do, and you can literally just echo that directly into, say, really fancy and it creates a password and I never set them the same. Somewhere up here. Hello? There we go. Come back over to here. Theory. Hello? What did I break? I probably broke the functions. Yep. Thanks, friends. And now, let's make sure. Hello. What? I forgot the equals on the end. Oh, wait, nope. Let's go over here, that's why. 
It's what happens when you run too many terminals. <laughs> Lesson learned, children. Just gonna go and see, is there any updates available? No, I just installed you. You can actually, uh, all these things here are all stored in site options, so you could get fancy and find what those site options are in your database and um, delete those options or change the options. So when you start, when you log into the back end, everything's already been stopped nagging me. <coughs> events? Sweet events. Boom, just like that. So, um, yeah. And you can do child theme starts. Uh, it's a nice way to get your plugin and theme development done very quickly. But don't put theme, uh, custom post types in your themes. Never do that. Always put functionality in plugins. Um, I was just wondering if you'd show us the starting a plugin, like. Oh, how that looks? Yeah. It's a scaffold for a plugin? Yeah. Do, 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 do. Uh, where am I? Am I in the right place? Yep, I am. There's so many um, options for these that I don't actually often remember all of them. Oh, and don't forget your plugin tests as well, which it'll, it'll auto create for you. Um, what would we call it? My sweet plugin. Um, my sweet plugin. There we go. And what else do we need to add to that? Anything? Oh no. Text domain. Always text domain. Just to be different. And that should be all we need. Nope. What did I spell incorrectly? Will it not let us do that for plugin? No, it does not. I will have to submit that change. You can do tab complete once you install a whole bunch of extra stuff, so it makes it a little bit faster. I have no idea why this is so slow. So what you get, number two, it's very much a skeleton, but you get everything you need, you get your PHP unit, your grunt file, so for your automations, for your minifiers and uh, pot generation and all those kinds of things, all your tests and just the basic plugin file which has absolutely nothing in it. And then from there you could um, use that to scaffold just your base plugin um, template and then scaffold your um, custom post types and your custom taxonomies and have it all packaged up. And if you kind of know exactly what you want, you can get most of the skeleton of your plugin done in minutes. I was totally logged in. Yes. Hey Matt, um, I was just curious, do you use any extensions regularly for it? Uh, no? None. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't needed them. Have you got any you'd recommend?
That's because I think there was an X team one that I found like kind of useful where you could run it on remote hosts. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I was just curious, like if uh, yeah, if you've ever found like the real need for them or. Um, I found a WooCommerce one, but they tried to get really fancy and it just blew up in their face and that's why uh, I ended up... Oh no. Spinning Beach Ball of Doom. That's why I ended up um, making my own... Oh, wait. That's where like, the WooCommerce scaffold came from. Uh, well, yeah, well, the, the idea is that you can call the WooCommerce commands and stuff to create these pages and all that. And so they were actually including all of the WooCommerce class files and doing all of this fancy stuff. I'm like, why don't you just make the page like that? Um, so I, they had this massive WC, uh, PCLI plugin uh, and I did it in like 10 lines of shell. It does the same thing. So what I ended up doing was just a one, one thing you should do is, if you want to see what a plugin changes, is do your database import export and then use a differential tool to see what changes in the database. So you can see what options it's actually manipulating when it's installing and being configured, and then take those options and put them in to uh, actually change this. So that one there is, that takes away the WooCommerce nag screen in one line. So that's kind of stuff in the world. I was just wondering if you could, if there was a dash p, like MySQL dash p option for when you create a user's stuff, like, I don't know, like to type passwords uh, on the command line, you'll get them in the, in the dash. Oh, in the, when you're creating users or when you're doing config, you can do interactive, um, but it's kind of pointless. Mm. I mean, because with MySQL dash p, it'll do all that you can specify the database name and everything, and then you just type in password. And yeah. It's not, it's not yeah, the kind of the, the idea behind a lot of what I do though is that it is completely automated. So you like you saw the script, I run one line and then magic, magic. We have the, uh, the, the whole WooCommerce demo site up and running, which is great if you need to just test some plugins on a local site. You can just spin up that shell script once you've got WPCLI installed. In a couple of minutes, you've got a, a demo site that you can mess around with without having to sit there and click and drag and it's like go go up, make a coffee, come back, and it's ready to go. So, and then it doesn't really matter with local stuff. You can, that's why I've got it generating usernames and passwords and database names and all that kind of stuff. My script doesn't work if you want to try and run multiple things at the, on the same day, unless you install them on different um, directories, then, it's, then it'll work fine. Who's around here? I have no idea. Here's a bunch of resources. Go and check out their GitHub. They're extremely active and very responsive to problems they may have. Um, there's my GitHub and my little plug in there, which will have a WPCLI import soon. Uh, just a quick one. Um, yes. Or probably not. Uh, with, the, with the database, how easy is it to transfer from, say, like a staging um, database to a production database? Well, it depends if it's a new production or an existing production. Existing. Yeah, that's always hard. Um, something that I've done quite regularly is I will dump the production database into staging and um, manipulate what I need to on the staging one and then export the database and run a text diff on the database and then only import the changes back into production. Have you ever used anything like brand? No. 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 I just scripted. Usually the plugins are cool and all that, but they usually just get in the way, so I just write a script to do it for me. Yeah. JSON export or just SQL. JSON's really good because there's some really good JSON diff tools now, um, which makes it very easy for you to import stuff. There's actually a plugin that allows you to um, export any WordPress option as a JSON object, which makes it very easy to then import using uh, WPDB import stuff. Thanks, We've got time for one more question. Does anyone else? Thanks. How do you um, automate your deploys and what other cool utilities have you put on your GitHub's? Uh, most of my stuff is usually just, 
I, I don't like to polish a lot of my stuff before I put it up there. I just put it up there and hope that people use it or comment on it. Um, all my, most of it is shell script actually. Uh, I'm in the process of building a whole bunch of uh, automated high availability WordPress infrastructure, which will be up there. That'll be a bunch of Docker files. Um, they're not there yet. Uh, I've just got a whole bunch of random node tests that I've been doing. But this is the only, probably the most polished repo minus my plugin that's up there at the moment. <laughs> um, but feel free to fork it and give me some comments or if you've got other scripts you want to add to it because there's just a, a base WordPress and then a WooCommerce store, but you could probably build other ones that are like a forum, for instance, and then it'll auto-configure BB Press. Um, or you could do social media based one, which will install other things. Thank you very much. Thanks, David.